through biopsies, and pay attention to this one, guys, through biopsies taken in the phase one study of the hair follicle and subsequent biomarker analysis, we were able to show that this is indeed the mechanism by which this is working in human patients who received PP405 topically. End of story. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. This video, obviously it's going to be about the hype of PP405 and it's going to be a bit ad hoc. So basically some you know, days ago, right now I'm recording this January 1st, 2025. So happy new year, but it won't be posted on the new year, of course. But there's been some hype, um, particularly on Tressless, uh, because I found this one particular uh, picture. And this picture is from one of Pelage Pharmaceuticals websites, or I guess hidden, hidden web pages, right? So this is a hidden web page. Um, the URL is pelagepharma.com slash pelage dash home dash two. And then you have the forward slash. But basically on this version of the webpage, you can see some sort of a mechanistic, you know, portrayalment of PP405 reaching its target. Now, actually, it's going to be a bit weird because I recorded a reaction that I did a couple days ago back, I think, December 29th. 2024, but it's going to be released, you know, maybe before or after this video, who knows. But in that, I was kind of speculating whether or not this image that we see here is a human hair follicle. And I think there's some good reason to suggest that this is a human hair follicle that's being shown here. So basically, to explain the image, we have the vehicle, right, which is, you know, this is a biopsy of some kind, right? So they went in, they took out the skin sample of something, right, the tissue sample of something. So this is a biopsy of some kind where you have vehicle placebo, which is probably just, you know, ethanol and propylene glycol, right? And uh, it doesn't show that there's any sort of activation or that there's any sort of drug that has reached or been detected in the, uh, in the tissue. Now, there's this faint purplish color, but, you know, it doesn't really show activity, right? And I think the activity that they're trying to look for here is lactate dehydrogenase Act, uh, enzymatic activity, right? Because in, I'm not going to show the study on the screen, but you can look at my bigger video where I talk about PP405. But basically, in the animal models and in the ex vivo model uh, of human hair follicles, when the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier inhibitor is used, it shows some sort of cellular activity, right? And that cellular, you know, response is that there's an increase of lactate dehydrogenase activity. So now the fact that, you know, we want to elucidate, is this biopsy of a human hair follicle of actual human patients? And it seems as if, right, that this PP405, the immense amount of purple or bluish, however you see it, I'm sorry if you're colorblind, but it seems to show that PP405 has elicited some sort of lactate dehydrogenase upregulation, right? And by that matter, maybe the increase of lactate production. Because, right, we're inducing this sort of internal stress response system that's switching the hair follicle stem cells and the environment into more of an anaerobic style of respiration, right? So to translate that, in the study that we've seen with Dr. William Laurie, the various, you know, the two studies that we've seen when it comes to mitochondrial pyruvate carrier inhibitors. When mitochondrial pyruvate carrier uh, protein is inhibited, it leads to a buildup of pyruvate in the cytoplasm and of the cell. And then that ultimately results in there being abundance of pyruvate that needs to be broken down. This somehow induces some sort of backup generator system, which spawns in or upregulates the amount of lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. It comes in, it transforms the pyruvate into lactate. And the core thing here that we have to understand is that the presence of lactate activates hair follicle stem cells. At least it seemed that that was the case in mice, hair, um, hair follicles, as well as in ex vivo model of human hair follicles using UK5099, another mitochondrial pyruvate carrier protein inhibitor. And now, in this case, and I'm going to show you why this may very well be, 
uh, a human hair follicle from a phase one clinical trial participant, right? This may very well be the same idea. Over here, hair follicle stem cells are being stimulated by lactate dehydrogenase or more so by lactate. So we're seeing a cellular response over here. So how do I know this? Well, we're actually going to be looking at an interview from this particular website called Dermatology Times. I'll put this interview in the description. And basically, we're going to be looking at this, right? So we're actually looking at uh, Krista Wang, MD, Dr. Krista Wang, Krista Wang. And if we go to the pharmaceutical website, the Pelage Pharmaceutical website, um, she's the chief medical officer, right? So she's very intimate with the happenings of the clinical trials that Pelage Pharmaceuticals is, do is doing. So basically, um, this article is a little bit of a mini interview with Dr. Krista Wang. It starts off by saying, question, right? In the context of the phase one trials, what specific proof of mechanism and target engagement was demonstrated for PP405? How do these findings support the progression to phase 2A? So they're going, you know, they're talking about the phase 2A clinical trials that are technically kind of ongoing. And I'll show you here on the screen as well. Um, this is from the clinicaltrials.gov, you know, uh, the, an extension of the NIH, uh, you know, web, um, sphere. So the FDA, U, the US FDA clinical trial website, right? It updates everyone on clinical trials. And this is showing that, you know, this is the phase two clinical trial for PP405 that's going on in the United States, right? Um, 60 people are enrolled. The study completion, right, is February 2025. So estimated study completion. But the primary completion where I think when they've gathered up all the data, right, and they're going to, you know, stop was December 2024. So it is the new year that I'm recording this video. It is literally New Year's Day. Um, so they mostly finished the study, but the actual completion, right, would be February 2nd, 2024. But this started, um, you know, six months ago, right? About six, six or seven months ago. So they've had six months of data. Um, and it's going to assess PP405 at a 0.05% concentration versus some sort of placebo. But anyway, going back to the interview, so Dr. Krista Wang actually says this, quote, there are three main takeaways from our phase one study. First, and of course, most importantly in a novel mechanism is safety and tolerability. We showed that across all patients, the drug was safe and well tolerated. Importantly, we were able to, from pharmacokinetics perspective, reach the target concentration in the hair follicles but also have no systemic absorption, no detectable drug levels in the blood. The drug was actually specifically engineered for that, for maximum penetration into the skin with minimal blood absorption. And I think that's why they've went with some sort of topical gel. So maybe they have a proprietary way of delivering the drug more effectively so it reaches the derma papilla of the hair follicle and doesn't really become too systemically available, right? So all these people who are like, oh, let's just get UK 5099 on the gray market or from some research laboratory, you don't know what sort of, you know, delivery mechanism they're using. If they're using any sort of complex, you know, nanoparticles of some kind, you don't know that, right? And you can't do that for sure. So let's go back to the article, right? So Chris, Dr. Krista Wang says, quote, secondly, we demonstrated a proof of mechanism the drug is an inhibitor of MPC, which is mitochondrial pyruvate carrier. It is a membrane transporter on mitochondria that is able to shift the aerobic anaerobic metabolism of the cell. Essentially, what this is able to do is modulate the levels of LDH within the cell and essentially be able to shift the metabolism so that it is able to activate stem cells that are otherwise dormant within hair follicles. Through biopsies, and pay attention to this one, guys. Through biopsies taken in the phase one study of the hair follicle and subsequent biomarker analysis, we were able to show that this is indeed the mechanism by which this is working in human patients who received PP405 topically. End of story. Let's just stop here real quick, right? 
So over here, let me just scroll up, right? What we're looking at over here is that, okay, this is actually something that's happening, right? We're actually getting a response of some kind from a human hair follicle. This is amazing news, right? So sure, we have a mechanistic sort of demonstration of PP405 working, right? Mechanistic data isn't necessarily going to convey into, you know, cosmetic benefits or, or uh, maybe some sort of statistically significant outcome, but it is encouraging, right, to see that they actually did do biopsies. And when I was talking to Kintor Pharmaceutical, I actually asked the question, um, do you guys do biopsies with KX826, pyrolutamide? Are you guys doing biopsies with GT229? And at least for the, their side, right, um, the government regulations, I think in China, the NMPA, I think that's their version of the FDA, the investigators over there, it looks like they don't really want to do biopsies because androgenetic alopecia doesn't seem like a serious condition for biopsies to be warranted for. And not only that, but also patients, you know, they have to consent to being biopsied, right? You're being a bit more invasive than just telling them to put some stuff on their scalps, right? So patients probably, you know, were averse to not, you know, so they don't want to do a scalp biopsy. And if you don't have that many patients that are willing to do scalp biopsies, then you know, they, it's just not useful to just do it on one patient or three patients, right? You want a meaningful amount of the patients in both the placebo arm and the treatment arm to actually, you know, do the biopsy. So it's very, very encouraging that even, you know, with this sort of mechanistic demonstration that we have a biopsy of a human hair follicle that is showing us that PP405 is actually activating the the hair follicle of to some extent it's doing some sort of bio engagement such that it was noted to increase lactate dehydrogenase levels and by that there is a good sign that lactate is being activated or being created from the pyruvate enzymatic activity you know the interactions there and that is possibly stimulating the hair follicle stem cells and this was noted you know after you know what was it seven days if i'm not uh, mistaken um, it says over here, right, uh, for, in the article interview with Dr. Krista Wang, quote, then we, then, sorry, then finally we were able to show that there was statistically significant activation. So KI-67, I guess that's the potency of some kind. I got to do some more research on that. In the hair follicle after just seven days of treatment compared to baseline in patients who were treated with PP405. This is important because we know that not only is the drug working through the mechanism by which it is expected to, right? But it's actually able to switch on stem cell activation in a significant manner. So this is cool, right? And she goes on to say, again, this is very pre uh, prelimin pre preliminary, sorry, um, but only seven days of treatment but it's very promising as we go into the phase two study from both a safety perspective, but also the preliminary efficacy, right? So this is amazing. And on their website, this hidden webpage, right? It says purple color indicates positive biomarker response in, in the hair follicle after 24 hours. So how do we know that this picture, right? If I go back to the uh, website over here, this picture over here, is a human hair follicle biopsy from their phase one clinical trial studies, right? So you have to do a little bit of research and be sneaky on this, right? Be very, you know, Inspector Gadget-esque. And over here, we're going to this article, not article, but this is a presentation from the American Academy of Dermatology uh, Association. And this is from their 2024 annual meeting. This is Saturday, March 9th, um, obviously 2024. So, you know, this was couple, you know, eight months ago or so, or, so. or uh, as you can see here, right, if we look at the keynote present uh, presenters, if we scroll all the way down, what do we see over here, right? At 11.40 a.m. on that day, Dr. Krista Wang, inhibition of pyruvate oxidation activates human hair follicle stem cells ex vivo. Wow. So, this means that at that point in time, you know, they were already, you know, finished their phase one clinical trial 
you know, uh, study, right? The 28 days or so to try to see if they can, you know, gauge for safety as well as to see some sort of early cellular response in the sort of mechanism of action, right? So that means they actually did test for it. And that's what this biopsy over here is, right? Now, if we are a bit sneaky, right? I want you guys to uh, pay attention here real quick. I'm going to be showing you guys something on the screen. Also, just as a quick side note, the Advancing Innovation in Dermatology Summit for 2025 will be happening January 12th, obviously 2025, within 11 days of the time of recording this video. So it is currently, again, January 1st, 2025. And look who's going to be here. The CEO of Palaz Pharmaceutical, Dr. Daniel Gill, or Jill. Hopefully I'm saying it, his name correctly. Um, so yeah, he's going to be giving a presentation. Maybe he's going to be talking about the efficacy so far, what they've noticed. Um, maybe from a safety side, maybe, you know, more so it's going to be from a safety side, obviously, because that is what the phase two clinical trials primary sort of objective is. But also we're probably going to get some additional sort of biopsy data and maybe let's hope, you know, cosmetic sort of efficacy, right? You know, cosmetic changes in those treated with PP405 at the 0.005%. Is that the concentration? Let's check real quick. 0.05%, right? Correction. Concentration. But anyway, now I'm going to truly end this video. All right. See you on the next one. Bye, guys.